Hello, welcome back. It's Fred in the shed with the hands, as usual. I've been getting a lot of comments from the CB radio videos since lockdown, and sort of lockdown has now finished in the UK. And it's been great, as you know, for CB radio. There's been a lot of interest in people coming back from CB radio. A lot of people that were on back in the day, um, like I was, and obviously they've been a little bit bored maybe at home and they've been watching YouTube videos like I make and other people make and they've decided to get themselves back on CB radio. And even now that a lot of people have returned to work, there's still been a lot more interest in CB radio. And uh, I've done a lot of videos recently, especially over on Fred in the Shed 2 on coming back to radio, getting your first contacts. Uh, also, I've done a lot of nostalgia type videos over on Fred in the Shed 2, if you've not seen those, about what it was like back in the day, because it was pretty awesome back in the day. But a lot of the comments I'm getting now, and I've had one or two recently, is people wanting to come back, or people that have ordered CB radios, um, if you can get one. A bit like the 6900 here, and they're a little bit kind of apprehensive about what to expect when they come back. When they come back on radio and uh, they sort of say to me, Fred, you know, how, how am I going to get on? How am I going to get sort of contacts? What, what do I, what are my expectations? What to expect? So this video is a chat type video like, like, like I do over on Fred in the Shed 2. So sorry if you've come here for a review or I'm not going to show you a load of CB action. I've got a few CB action videos coming up, by the way, and I'm going to change things slightly um, because people have asked me about the kind of range that you can expect from a home base CB radio set up especially on sideband so on the new Fred in the Shed 305 videos and I've got a few will be coming up over the next couple of weeks what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the approximate range of what I'm signals what I'm getting uh, especially locally as well it give you an idea locally and a bit of a spoiler alert from my setup say with the 6900 or the 9900 I'm getting up to about 35 miles on sideband uh, gives you an idea of a local sort of range. But as I say, that's coming up on the new 305, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. A little bit of chat on the 19 here on FM on the UK. So right, people, it's just a chat video, people are saying to me, you know, Fred, when I come back on radio, is it gonna be like it, like the old days? Where do, I, where do I get my copies? Where do I get my contacts from? Um, the first thing I've got to say to you, it's like anything else, unfortunately. When CB arrived in the early 80s and throughout to the mid 80s, it was absolutely awesome. I was 15, 16 years old. It exploded, as you know, it exploded onto the scene. CB radios were everywhere, antennas were everywhere. Um, you probably had three or four people in your road if it was a reasonable length that would be on CB radio. Getting contacts was no problem. You'd be straight onto the channel 114 if you was home based in the UK. Pick up the mic and yeah yeah one four for a copy, one four for a copy, one four for a Roger and straight away you was straight onto radio. But I, I've got to say if, if you're expecting it to be like that you're going to be very disappointed. It's a bit like that old kind of pub that you went to in your teenage years that was rocking every night of the week and had really attractive barmaids. If you go back there now it's not going to be what it was and it can be a bit of a disappointment. And radio in that respect, in that respect, is a bit of a disappointment if you're going to expect it to be chock-a-block where you left it in the 1980s. I'm afraid it just isn't like that anymore. And there's, good, there's a good and bad side to that. And the bad side is that you have to hunt out more for your contacts. You're going to have to put in a little bit more effort, and I'll just go into that in a second. But the good side is a lot of the kind of stupidness, the keying up, the playing, the music, a lot of the swearing, the kids that totally trashed CB, it ruined it, bloody ripped the arse out of it. Um, in general, that has gone and everyone is a little bit more sensible. Not everywhere you do get pockets of towns and I know people have said that they're still getting sort of you know, bucket mouths on CB, but in general around my area that everyone's grown up now and uh, that has now gone and that is a good thing. If you come back on CB, this is channel 14, this used to be our calling channel. It's pretty clear, it's pretty dead now. You could sit here all day on channel 14. Yeah, one four for a copy, one four for a copy. 
And I could do that all day and get absolutely nowhere. So I'm afraid, for our, in my perspective, the 1.4 has now finished. Everyone hangs out on the 1.9 on the FM now. So the 1.9 is the place to start. This will be a place to hang out. People generally don't call 1.9 for a copy anymore. Um, if you want to get onto the 1.9 and there's no one on, then you can call out 1.9 for a radio check. Most people will come back and at least give you a radio check and hopefully you can then develop that into a little bit of a contact have a little chat with people um, another thing on the one nine whereas we used to do we used to sort of go where we used to go one nine for a copy where we'd get a copy and then you would say right pick a window and you might go up to say channel 25 for example if it was clear and you would clear the calling channel um, I'll be honest, people, because there's so many little people on now, people don't tend to call, clear the calling channel anymore. So a lot of the conversations start and end on the 1-9. That might not be a problem if it's fairly quiet, like it is around here. We've got... I've got a couple of guys here on a Sunday morning just chatting on the 1-9. You know, that, that's not a problem. It can be an issue if you're going into a town environment and you've got suddenly a lot of people on the 1-9. Um, I would say to you that if you go on the 1-9 and you do get a contact, if you can try and get them to maybe go a few channels up and clear the 1-9, I think it's just a courtesy, but you might find that they want to stick on the 1-9. Now, Let's just talk a little bit about equipment. Uh, a lot of people are dragging their old CB radios from attics and things like that. Maybe Rotel 240s, Harvards. Um, that's fine, you know, uh, Amstrad 901s. Yeah, absolutely fine. So you drag, you drag your radio out and um, then it comes down to antennas. Now, the, the best choice, I think, to get a contact is to get a mobile antenna if you've got a car stick it on top of your car look on google maps find the highest point the highest point of a hill around your area and maybe if you've got the time take a drive out there set your radio up have a flick round and then hang about hang about on the one nine and maybe give a few a few calls out there you go There you go, did you hear that? A guy there calling out for a radio check and someone came back to him straight away. So yeah, as I just, just happened to get it on film, a guy there calling out for a radio check, someone came back to him. So get, get to some high ground if you can, set your antenna up, learn how to do your SWR. I'm not going to go into it in this video, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. So get your SWR, get your antenna adjusted so you're not going to damage your radio because that would be tragic. And uh, yeah get out on the high ground. If you're going to be home based, like a lot of you are, because a lot of you've got families now and work commitments, it ain't like the old days, is it? So yeah, you're home based. Um, please don't try and start and use just a simple springy mobile antenna or maybe an old sort of defender antenna mobile that you had in the past and stick that on a radiator in your dining room and hope to get out. It's not gonna work like that. In the day, you could stick it on a biscuit tin. I did do a video on that recently, it still works. But if you stick it on a biscuit tin, you're only gonna have a couple of miles range if you're lucky. That isn't really enough anymore because I say we're all sort of spread out. So think about what you're gonna do. The best chance you've got of receiving stations, receiving signals, is, as it's always been, is get yourself a cheap home-based antenna. The first, my first choice would be a silver rod. They're about 30 pounds on eBay. You know, it's always been a great antenna. Either go for the half wave or if you can get it, maybe the five eighth wave because that's slightly longer. And just set it up. In, if you've got a garden, it's perfect. Stink, get a pole, get an aluminium pole, either a two or three meter pole. Again, you can buy those on eBay. Sink it in the ground. It doesn't have to be permanent. You could sink yourself down one of those washing line sort of pole mounts. If you fix that in the ground, that will be fine for temporary use. Or maybe how I started, get yourself a cast iron umbrella stand, what you use for a patio umbrella. And you can then put, nowadays they do ones where you can get some uh, cheap concrete slabs that you can weigh it down. Uh, or like I did, get maybe a couple of bags of sand. Get yourself a pole, put your silver rod on top of that, get, adjust your SWR, and yeah, you're away. 
get yourself your radio. That will give you the best best option. You're going to be receiving stations on FM coming in uh, 25, 30 miles, depending on your location. Getting back out to them, that will give you the best chance that you're going to have using, say, an old radio on perhaps four watts legal power. Now, don't do what many people do. This is a mistake. Don't initially before you set up that big antenna maybe get a mobile antenna and then straight away you think oh i can i can hear a couple of stations coming in you know yeah i, I can't hear me straight away go out and invest in an amplifier or a burner that is that is honestly a mistake it's antenna 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 get the best possible antenna that you can for the money if you can do it and you don't mind the extra effort and the expense get a couple of T and K brackets, put it up on the side of your house, get it up on the side of your house, the height will help you, but you can start off with it in the garden on a pole. But yeah, invest your money in the antenna first, um, RG58 coax is fine to start with, Mini 8 coax is better, maybe RG213 if you want to take it a little bit more seriously, but just start off with the RG58, that's fine, but get your antenna, get it out in a garden if possible, get it out in the open. If you can't put up an antenna all the time, maybe your missus, your wife don't like it, your landlord or your neighbours, then have a look. You can always use a temporary antenna called a T2LT antenna and a fiberglass telescopic pole. These poles are sold for campers. They use them as flag poles when they go camping. They wreck these are outside their tents at festivals and concerts and things like that. So you can find your way back to your tent. They're not all that expensive. You can get yourself a nine meter pole. Um, look up a T2LT antenna. If you, if you can use a soldering iron and you can use a tape measure, there are tutorial videos on YouTube. You can build one yourself very, very, very cheaply. If you don't want to do that or you can't be bothered, you can generally buy them for about 20 to 25 pounds. They come up on eBay. They're not on all the time. You might have to wait a little while. But if you do a search, you will find it. A T2LT, I've used them myself. And I've gone on holiday on mobile locations. There's videos about that on the channel. Just search T2LT on Fred in the Shed 1 and you'll see that they work to great effect. They work pretty much as good as an aluminium or fiberglass base station antenna. Definitely worth trying out. And of course, when you've finished using the radio, you can just collapse the pole and you can put it all away and you're not upsetting anyone. You've got to kind of work perhaps to get your contact. This was exactly what it was like for me when I started. I've got a video, I'll just put a little clip in. I know this video is going to go on a bit, so bear with me. I'll just put a little clip in. This was from 2015 when I first came back on air with my Grant 2. I could not get a contact, even with an outside antenna. Just, just watch this. They probably can't hear me, they're probably way out. Yeah, bye. Right, channel seems to be clear now. Break, break on the one line. Anyone want to say hello? Hello? And this is pretty much what you get all the time. <laughs> I'll give it one more go. Break, break on the one line. Does anyone want to say hello? Come back. There you saw it. <laughs> that was me. That was me struggling. I almost gave up. I almost gave up. Um, the secret, if there is a secret, is I'm afraid you have to use social media on computers um, or your phone. And I know a lot of you don't like Facebook because of the, you know, don't like, you know, the, the information they store about you and all that con controversy that went on. But things like Facebook are really, really good to find local radio groups. If not, just go onto Google. Put in CB Radio Forum, you'll see a lot of forums pop up. My favourite is still the Charlie Tango Forum, but you don't have to use that one. There's lots and lots of threads or forums. Get yourself on a CB Radio Forum get, and just put a question out there. You know, hi guys, my name's Fred. I live in St Albans in the UK. I'm thinking of coming back with a CB Radio. Do you think there's anyone around in my area? See what comes back. All you need is one person. You need one person. Oh, hi, Fred. Yeah, I'm on CB. I'm about, you know, six or seven miles. Yeah, I, I should get you. Oh, great. You know, can, can we meet up on air? Can, can we perhaps go on one evening? Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll tell you what about Tuesday night at seven o'clock, Fred? Yeah, yeah, seven o'clock. There you go. Meet up. Uh, channel. Let's go channel 30. All right, channel 30, seven o'clock. See you there, mate. And that's it. 
you, you get you get that first contact and when you do get that first contact um, you, you expect to be a little bit mic shy all right this is another thing that you want to expect when, when you was a lad and perhaps you had a CB radio in your car you would you, you would you would you would jack the lad you was on the radio yeah hello mate yeah yeah you, you've got you know you've got Fred in the shed here what, what's your 20 fella oh how many candles you're burning oh yeah nice one oh yeah I'm running you were kind of a jack the lad on CB if you're coming back on CB and you're like my age you in you're probably in your mid 50s expect to get a little bit of mic shyness you know don't worry about it but you might kind of you might get to, you might hear people like we've got on here now well if they actually spoke it would help and you might go oh, oh you, you want to cut in and you want to cut in and you're going to get a little bit of mic shyness okay it, it's natural it will take you a little while to get over that um so when you get your first contact you know, think about what you're going to talk about. Um, if nothing else, most people would like to talk about their equipment on radio. So, chat. Yeah. Oh, hello, mate. Yeah. Okay. Well, what radio are you using? Oh, yeah. I'm using a. I'm using an SS six thousand nine hundred N. Oh, okay. What's that like? Yeah. It's it's really good. It clarifies a little bit funny, but uh, yeah, no, it's a great radio for hundred and sixty quid. Oh, okay. Yeah. What antenna are you using? Oh, yeah. I'm using. Oh, yeah. Do you use an amplifier? Oh, no, no. Don't 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 touch amplifiers, mate. Work on your antenna. Do you know what I mean? So build up build up on talk about radio. Um, probably best not to go on and sort of say, hello, oh, mate. Oh, you got any kids? So you know. Do you like what football team do you support probably won't work as well so and then when, when you get your contact okay th the next thing you want to do and before you sort of sign off is make sure you say oh you know who's around who's around in the area who's around and let's say so let's let's say i'm talking to talking to tim for example not just any name but tim and tim will say oh yeah yeah there's a few people on you know you've got uh, you've got the two daves on you've got awesome dave pucker dave uh, yeah they're on oh okay tim well, what time you know what time what channel oh they go on sometimes there's a little net that goes on on a wednesday evening oh yeah yeah oh that's on channel say channel 30 they start about seven o'clock oh have a listen out for that Oh, okay, yeah, write it down, write it down. Anyone else on? Oh, well, there's a couple of guys that, you know, generally hang out on uh, channel channel 38. Oh, okay, what time? Oh, well, they're on in the morning, sometimes about nine o'clock. So, again, write it down, and if, you, if you're around at nine o'clock in the morning, tune on that channel, because you're going to find that, like our 305 group, people come on to the radio, they come on for little kind of groups, maybe an hour in the morning, half an hour in the afternoon, uh, and then for the rest of the time, they're not on. And again, in the evening, you've got nets that start up all around the country. And then again, they're not on. So it's just finding out. You, you could be sitting here all day, flicking round of the 40 on the FM, for example, and you won't maybe not hear anyone. But you could go on at, say, 8, eight o'clock, and you might have five or six people up on ch Channel 30. You might have five or six people all chatting away on Channel 30. You wouldn't know they were there because they go on at Pacific times. I'm, I'm rabbiting away and I I'm chatting away again so sorry about that it's going on a bit um, and as I mentioned on the last video if you're starting out from scratch and you're not using old equipment if, if I know these are out of stock at the moment but if you can hang on and wait I, I would definitely definitely think about starting with a sideband radio because I explained on the last video if we get DX coming in in the summer and in the autumn months you've got a chance of getting foreign contacts and a, a lot of people like myself like to use DX because you can get out further and you can talk to more people so yeah if you're starting from scratch and a multi-band radio like the 6900 it's a little bit to, to learn than the older radios but it does give you AM FM upper and lower sideband it also does CW which is Morse code as well if you're really into that and then if you want to go on and you want to take your ham ticket of course then something like that you could use that I suppose on 10 meters if you reduce the power down to 10 watts um, it puts out a little bit too much power to be legal on 10 watts and again these radios that I'm using here are not UK legal they, they, these are not approved by Ofcom so you are in, in effect breaking the law although as far as I'm aware in 2020 no one is currently being prosecuted by Ofcom anymore they're, they're not really bothering about 11 meter CB which is a, oh, it's a good thing that we can use radios like this which we shouldn't be using but it's a bad thing that I've got that interference problem in my shack and of course they're not going to be interested in doing anything about it there you go, um, just me waffling in the shack. I know a few of you are not going to like that, but uh, it's a it's a waff it's a video. So if you're 
if you're thinking about coming back to CB, if you've ordered a CB like a lot of you have and you're waiting to come back, I hope this video is sort of helpful. And like I say, if you can't go mobile, if you're in a home, if you're in a home situation, antenna, 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 get yourself a decent antenna. Um, silver silver rods fine if you want to go a little bit more money then maybe a, a, a game master antenna a serio 2016 an antron 99 they're, all, they're good antennas but a silver rod is fine to start with it really does the job and like i said just to recap if you can't put up a permanent antenna perhaps think of a t2lt sort of mobile kind of home base type antenna and that's it right it's a bit of a waffle on um sorry, i'm just getting so many comments coming in on that i want to wish you all the best all of you and uh, yeah if you stick with it if you come out to cb stick with it you know don't give up straight away if you can't get contacts and put all your stuff back on ebay stick with it and that's about it more videos on cb will be coming up look out for those 305 videos with the distance shown they'll be coming up in a couple of weeks time or so but as for now as always thank you for tuning in listening to my old waffle boring the ass off you stay safe it's still dodgy out there and of course, I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers, guys.